Welcome back to the third race in the Golden Trail World Series. We're here in Stranda, Norway, with a back-to-back -back episode showing you Stranda Ford and Sierra Zanat. Strand is a small town of only 4,000 people in the north of Norway, with near constant daylight in the summer, surrounded by waterfalls, fjords and lakes. I ran this race um, 2016 and I really love the area around here and I have been running a lot on these trails. I'm super happy to be here. Um, I'm trying to come back to like higher racing after four years of more or less not being in the scene, having two kids and yeah, just super excited to be here. Estoy deseando que hagan el recorrido original porque y si nevase un poquitín, hiciera malo viento, pero que se pudiera hacer el recorrido, para mí sería perfecto, porque en cuanto más eh, difícil es el clima y el día, pues mejor. Espero sacar la puntuación necesaria en estas tres carreras para estar en la final de Madeira lo más arriba posible y entonces pues ir allí porque tiene toda la pinta de que va a ser súper divertido ir a competir contra los mejores durante cinco días en una final que va a ser de infarto y súper divertida. One here and then the other one there. Mm. Yeah. Where did you learn this? Uh, orange ring, you know. <laughs> Vamos a correr. We're here at the start of Stranded Fjord, and as you can see, the weather is just about holding, but the top will be zero degrees with whipping winds. Our favorites have to be John Album and Sara Alonso, winners of Mont Blanc, but there's going to be more fallers in the Italian Football League. The weather up there means it's muddy, there's some really technical terrain, so watch out in the men's for people like Manuel, Fred, Bart's back, Davide and El Hussein's going to be climbing. In the ladies, Blondine's returning having won the Euros, but Elise Ponset is a specialist in this distance and terrain, and Patricia is also incredibly fast, and Carrie is a specialist on the downs. Every single position will change at every step. This will be the race of the season. Cette course-là, euh, elle me tient à cœur hein, parce que c'est une très belle course, c'est ma première course des Golden Trail Series. 
Effectivement, j'ai encore l'impression d'avoir euh, retrouvé euh, au moins mon niveau d'avant et, et, et ce qui fait peut-être une force, euh, petite force en plus par rapport aux, aux autres années, c'est encore une fois cette, euh, ce plaisir de re, rechausser les baskets sans avoir l'appréhension d'avoir mal. J'ai envie de l'aborder de façon la plus sereine, donc j'avoue que je n'ai pas trop regardé le profil, ni le parcours, ni tout ça. Et voilà, comme je dis, j'y vais vraiment pour, pour le plaisir et pour enfin euh, retrouver un peu l'ambiance Golden Trail sans, sans gros objectif, donc je me suis pas... Non, j'ai pas trop regardé. Je n'arrive jamais avec une stratégie. Inconsciemment, euh, c'est d'être... Euh, bah, c'est au feeling, toujours. J'ai pas de stratégie, en fait. J'y vais en fonction de mes sensations euh, du moment. Ça marche ou ça marche pas, mais je, voilà, pas de stratégie en tête. So we hit the top and Davide is right behind me and I knew like now is when I have to make the difference because this is the type of terrain that I would feel that I have an advantage. The first part of the race uh, was for me very good. I was feeling very easy, uh, my legs was uh, very light. I knew that the uphills were going to be like my strongest part, so I took it off pretty hot from the beginning. El principio de la carrera ha sido super rápida. Sofía ha salido super fuerte, y entonces yo he seguido detrás de ella con un hueco al irondel. Coming down, I wasn't good, so I lost some position. El terreno técnico era técnico, pero yo miraba el reloj y veía que podía, iba bajando en lo más técnico que, que había a 5 minutos el kilómetro. Y eso significa que es técnico, pero que te permite correr. La bajada de las piedras, la verdad es que me ha ido bien, o sea, me he caído dos caídas muy fuertes, pero el problema ha empezado cuando ha llegado la parte del barco. I knew that uh, the downhill I would probably be more confident than others as it's pretty technical, so I saw that I could recover some time there and that made me relax a bit on the uphill. <laughs> Après la descente, la deuxième descente bien technique, moi ça a été, ça a été un supplice en fait. J'arrêtais pas de tomber, j'avais aucune, voilà, j'étais un petit peu déstabilisée euh, jusqu'à ce que je vois Elise qui, yo, <rire> hyper à l'aise, en train de voler de caillou en caillou. J'étais là, bon, tout le monde est pareil sauf quelques énergies humaines. Ma stratégie pour la première partie de course, c'était effectivement de temporiser sur le début et après dès que ça allait monter, que ça allait être un peu plus montagne. C'était plus à mon avantage et là c'était bah voilà essayer de remonter petit à petit. I literally was just in my own bubble. I just had to push, just concentrate on my own race and not think about anything else. And I just, I mean, I've got good experience on slippery terrain from obstacle racing, good experience on swamps from orienteering. So I thought like. If anyone should be able to run this section the fastest, it should be me, so I was just going to try and concentrate and, and do that. But then it was this part more wet and marshy, and I think I did uh, really well, and uh, I think so, and I could catch up uh, people, so it was um, good for the motivation. <laughs> when we came to the flat, muddy part, and I was able to catch with the uh, uh, Elusine and pass him. Après, on est arrivé sur la partie euh, des tourbières, enfin la partie humide. Et là, j'ai recollé euh, Emily Fosberg. Donc, euh, ah, le rêve!
We are here uh, in the last downhill of the Stranda Fjord Trail Race and you see that uh, it's quite technical, wet, and, but this is the fast part of the downhill. Look at this, it's solid cable. Anders, what is this? Yeah, it's a secret weapon we have in Norway. The race is really short, but it's technical and heavy, so the race time will be long. There will be so much changing throughout the course. After the technical part, we have some flat, heavy swamp part with big mud holes. So I hope one of some of them will fall down there and that we need to swim. And as Carrie's just seen the course, but she's not seen the swamps, how deep do the swamps go? Uh, approximately, yeah. <laughs> Finish lines are always a great feeling when you're winning. Golden Trail Series finish lines are amazing. There's lots of people cheering. I mean, it is, is an amazing feeling to cross that line first, look at your watch, see what time you've done, and then finally get to relax, because it's a pretty intense experience all the way to the end. I'm very tired, especially for the last pressure that I had to take for the fault of Bar. We did a couple of kilometers at 2.40, I think it marked the clock. Two kilometers before the finish line, I was maybe 10 seconds behind Manuel Merilas. I was trying to catch him, but he know me. I didn't know where, how far back the second female was, um, and I didn't really want to know. I was just, I was kind of running in fear, I guess. Du coup, oui, je suis hyper heureuse. C'est incroyable de faire une deuxième place sur une manche de Golden Trail Series, et je savais que c'était cette fois-ci qu'il fallait que je fasse quelque chose parce que c'était technique. Donc, je l'ai fait, c'est trop bien. I'm so happy to see that the training, like I respond to the training, and that I start to feel like able to push for three hours. We came to Strandefjord for something new, and the race course certainly delivered. Some runners came unstuck in the mud but not champions, John Alban and Sophia Lockley. Our coverage continues with Sierra as an owl, but before then, we need to give a proper goodbye to Norway. Well, after Hard Rock, it's been mostly resting and then short and very easy runs to regenerate. And then the last week I've been doing like some quick test home, like a bit fast and uphill. And it's been very good, like the times are there. I think I'm in good shape and it's many, many strong guys. So it will be a big fight anyway. It was like a, yeah, a shitty day in Mont Blanc, but I am, I think, more motivated than before Mont Blanc because I, I need yeah, to prove that I am, I am here. Remy is one of the biggest engines in the, in the game. Like, he has such a talent and he's uh, probably the best climber on the field. And uh, he will be for sure pushing at the beginning. And then uh, he's been struggling uh, some years to, to finish well the race, the last part, but I think he's improved and he looks uh, much better on the long distance now, so I think he will be definitely in the game till the end. Yeah, so the good solution I think is to, to follow Kilian until you, you can't, because uh, yeah, for sure he's the, the, the man who won the most in Cerzinal and he know really well the pace you have to, to take to, to do a good time, so it's a good, uh, good guy to follow. <laughs> I think Remy always uh, starts very strong, so uh, and he's a very good climber, so I think he will smash the climb, he will go fast there and then try to, to push and, and to, to keep from that moment. But I will be surprised if Remy is not like really pushing hard in the uphill. Of course he will follow the first guys and and then he is so, so good in the last part, so for here I think it's good to follow and, and then just push. <laughs> Kilian, we will be there to push you. Remy, let's go party very, very hard this night, get destroyed, and hopefully you sleep over and you don't take the start. Even if it's at 11, so probably you will anyway wake up, so yeah. Please don't push too hard. Welcome back to race number four. Sierras are now the big one. This brings together the best trail, road, and mountain runners to see who truly is the best over 32 kilometers with 2,200 meters of ascent. The big story in the men's is whether Killian can get his 10th. And for a change, I don't actually think he's the favorite. 
Patrick Kipengino has been running such fast times this season that you've got to think he's going to be leading at halfway. But is he over-raced and will he hang on? All three podium runners are back again to challenge and we're going to have Remy really leading out with his superb climbing skills. So this battle will change and change all the way to the finish. In the women's, Maud is back, but she's been injured only running once a week. And Joyce Nijiru, who has been also the trail runner of the season so far, is going to be back. She raced last week though, as did Sarah Alonso. Are they going to be too tired? We can't call it. It's going to change throughout the course of this race. So let's see how the start goes. It was very tough in the hill, but I tried to maintain seven kilometers, six kilometers, and not a slope there. I tried to push. I was very tired, but I maintained to see, let me see these guys, if they can follow me. When we were climbing at around two kilometers, the first, the first group was in the front. Then I was number six on the cabin. I was a bit afraid of the race because it is my first time to run over 30 kilometers. And uh, we did run all together this first climb and when we reached the top of this climb, Mark, he just like went like so quick, so fast just for it. When the race starts, we climb up. Everything is always up for so long time because this is my first time. So I was to say, oh, how, how long this up will go? I was told by some colleagues that I was in, uh, inside good time at some point because the, everything is always changed. Up is finished, so there, Changed, so I was to do something to work, to put more effort. In the first part, in the uphill, I was focused on my uh, tempo. I saw Ken Kenyan African uh, woman was uh, ahead of me, but um, yeah, I, I just did my uh, my uh, pace. I was good. The legs were good, but quickly the first woman woman took an advance two minutes maybe almost three minutes and I just overtook uh, the second woman just before Ponchet. We're just over an hour into the race and it's been blown apart already. Five runners were running together in the men's on the up but by the top Mark Congogo and Patrick Kipengenio had broken free. They're together at the moment, a minute ahead of their nearest rivals. But the surprise here is that Killian is back in seventh place. There's six runners ahead of him, four of them looking incredibly fast. He's come from behind before, but I just don't think he can catch up four minutes on four runners, because one of them's going to stick. And it's a similar story in the women's. They were running together. Maud and Esther looking strong, but at the peak, Esther Chezand attacked, and she's now built a two-minute lead over Maud. It's two minutes to their closest rivals, with Bailey Kowalczyk and Sarah Alonso trying to close the gap. l'année dernière, c'était vraiment une course magique. Euh, J'avais vraiment encore beaucoup apprécié courir là-bas. J'avais fini à une très correcte troisième place derrière Maud et Ninke. Pour moi, c'est une de mes courses préférées. On est super bien accueillis. Il y a vraiment une super ambiance. C'est la montagne, c'est juste magnifique. Et cette année, je m'attends vraiment encore à une très grosse émulation du fait qu'il y aura de nouveau beaucoup de public.
In 2020, it was the first time I was running Sierzinal and I had the second best time. So it was a real uh, big breakthrough for me in the trail running uh, scene. This year it's a little bit special because we were competing uh, less than a week ago in Norway. So we will see how it goes, but um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the race. The start was like massive, all the people running really hard on the road. And uh, I took it easy a bit, take my position and then uh, try to save the legs of the first part. From Chandelin, I was only two minutes uh, behind the, the first woman. I thought, ah, oh, two minutes, it's a lot. And I was tired, but nothing is impossible. I just ran my own race and did what was best for me in it, and it paid off really well. I was alone uh, in the woman field because I didn't see uh, the first woman and behind I didn't see anything. We're just two hours into the race and Mark Kongogo has built a commanding lead of three and a half minutes. Behind them though, there are four runners all going for that second place. Patrick's still there. Killian is just about hanging on, but the big news is that Andrea Blanes from Spain is firing through the pack. Andreu Blanes, who is incredibly uh, coming back, he was outside of the top 10 and is now in fourth place. What's the position? And he said fourth, and I was like, okay, I think I can be in the podium. Ladies, it's still Esther, followed by Maud, followed by Filares. They don't look like they're going to be caught, but the big change is that Maud is kicking into gear. Esther has about a two minute lead over her. It was longer, but when they passed, Maud looked like she had more focus. It's going to be super close. I don't think she's got quite enough distance left, but there's a chance it's going to be a sprint finish. When I reached almost to finish, I stepped a stone. Oh, my leg it was almost to broken. Aye, aye, aye. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I was tired, then I tell myself I have to push. Look at Kylian, he's passing, he's passing. Kylian's coming in so hard. Then the last downhill where it's very steep and technical, I was like passing Petro and I was also passing uh, the other running from Run Together. At the finish line, I saw many people cheers me. Oh, I think, thank you, God. He made me to take proud to win this race. Yeah, I'm second. It's crazy and I couldn't help but just like 
wave the people and, and enjoy the moment. I want to say that I will, I will be here next year. I will come for Terraco. 20 centimeters to the finish line, I saw on my left, like Petro just coming and sprinting to the finish. I fall down, but I have to do my all means to go down. I feel very happy because it is my first mountain race. The finish line is always amazing because a lot of people, the crowd is very loud. So I'm just happy to, to be here and to be doing what I love and, and to have all the hard work pay off also. Um, it was an amazing feeling. We told you it was going to be an incredible battle. It wasn't as much as we thought. Mark and Gogo flew over the top and wins the first Sierras out for Kenya. In second place, Andrew Blanis storming through the field. Patrick Kipungeo holds on for third. Petro Mamu refinding his form for fourth. And Kylian Jornet, the former champion, coming home in fifth. In the ladies, Esther Chizang has never run a trail race before and she begins by winning the biggest one in the world. Incredible. Maud Mathis, despite being injured, holds on for second. What a performance, nearly tracking her down. Valeris Kisang holds on for third. Teresa Amoso in fourth. And Sarah McCormack comes fifth for Ireland. That's been Sierra's and Al. We're back in a month's time in the US of A at Pikes Peak. Mark and Gogo, oh yes he can. Happy trails. <laughs>